there are seven soul-sucking mistakes that could be ruining your production. And the reason I know this is because I've made all of these mistakes. I learned them the hard way, and now that I'm on the other side, I wanna help you avoid some of the things that messed me up big time. I think a lot of you could be making more than one of these mistakes, so make sure to watch all of them just to cover all your bases and be safe. And there's only seven of them, so let's get started. Mistake number one is never putting any music out. Whether you're a producer just kind of messing around in your bedroom, or you're a full-on artist, you need to be able to present your ideas to the world and get feedback from real people who don't know you personally. I understand the potential backlash for telling people to put music out, like what if I hate the song that I released a few months after I put it out? Or what if it gets a lot of negative feedback, yada yada yada? And that's totally valid, but the reality is not everything you release is going to be perfect. In fact, pretty much nothing you release is gonna be perfect or absolutely 100% finished. And all you can do is do the best that you're capable of right at this moment in time. Each song you release is almost like a little time capsule of what you were capable of when you released that song. You can make a million different 90 second demos, and I'm so guilty of doing this, but you really improve a ton as a producer when you force yourself to actually finish music. Some of you might just do music as a hobby and you don't wanna become an artist and all that, but I still wanna encourage you to try to finish some stuff, upload on SoundCloud or YouTube. Keep the stakes low, but don't rob yourself of the incredible growth that happens when you force yourself to finish a song. I made music for years just writing crappy love songs on my guitar, and once I started producing music, finishing songs, and actually putting them out there, that's when things started to change for me, and I was able to make a living from my music and tour the world. Do I still have songs out there that make me cringe? Yes. Absolutely, but I couldn't be more proud of the music that I'm making right now, and it took all those cringe releases to get here, so I wouldn't trade it for the world. Give yourself a chance to see what happens when you actually put some music out, because trying and failing is a lot better than always wondering. Alrighty, the biggest mistake, number two, is you keep too many distractions around. I had a really, really hard time focusing for most of my life, especially in school. Then once I discovered something I could actually focus on, in this case, producing music, I realized that my ADHD is actually really helpful for me to sort out what I'm actually passionate about. ADHD is basically a dopamine deficiency. So in order for you to stay focused on something, it's gotta be something that's genuinely really interesting to you. Something that makes your brain release dopamine. Hence why school was just an absolute nightmare for me. All that to say, I can focus on making music for hours on end when I'm in the zone. But because of my ADHD, I can get sidetracked and lose an hour of work just like that. You can be the best producer in the world, but if you can't focus, you won't get anything done. So when I really need to go sicko mode on a song and finish it for a deadline, there are two rules I stick to that make sure I don't get derailed and I don't waste precious time. First things first, turn off that Wi-Fi. Or if you use ethernet, unplug it, just disconnect your internet access. I have a tendency to work for a bit, and then the second I hit writer's block or export my progress and listen back, I'm out of Ableton and I'm onto YouTube, or chess or Instagram, you name it. So no internet for me is rule number one for focus. Rule number two is no phone. If my phone is even in the room, it's on do not disturb and it's on the other side of the room face down. If you're like me, it takes just one little notification to send me down a rabbit hole that can last for hours. And the reality is 99.9% .9 of notifications can wait. It's just not worth having it on for me. I also use do not disturb on my computer to make sure I don't get notifications on there either. But turning off your internet should help with that. This is a tool. But the second it stops serving me as a tool and starts distracting me, it's a distraction. It's not a tool anymore. Tools serve you distractions hold you back. Make sure you're the one using your phone and not the other way around. Seriously, I invite you to take me up on this, eliminate distractions, and see how much your workflow and production improves. All right, mistake number three is comparison. Theodore Roosevelt says comparison is the thief of joy. Now, I actually recommend comparison in some other videos, but that's only in the context of production, mixing, and mastering. And comparing your song to a reference song to make sure you produced it, mixed it, and mastered it properly. And that sort of thing is great. But comparison outside of this context will kill you. You have very little control over how a song performs once it's released into the wild. Obviously, you can hire a marketing team and that's gonna help, and there's viral hits that catch on seemingly out of nowhere. But so often, there are two artists or producers at the same experience level, and they both release songs of a similar quality at the same time, and one just does way better than the other with almost no reasonable explanation. That's just how it goes sometimes, and if you get stuck in the trap of comparison, it's gonna discourage you and cause you to act out of insecurity. There's also this lie that if someone else is succeeding, it's 
It's like taking away from your success. And for years, I had trouble being happy for and celebrating other artists who were at my level because I felt like I was working so hard, yet they were getting all the success that I wanted. The reality is their success didn't detract from my potential to be successful at all. There were more than enough fans and listeners to go around and I was just being petty and insecure. Once I stopped spending my time comparing my numbers to other people and feeling sorry for myself, I started improving way more and I actually enjoyed my life and the level of success that I did have. So don't compare your numbers to other people's numbers because all it's gonna do is just steal your joy and it's not actually gonna make your music any better. Okay, on a mistake number four, trying to do this alone. My friend Kyle was doing pretty well on his own for a while with a solo project called Singularity. But as soon as he moved in with some other producers and partnered with his brother and started their project Gray, things really shifted for him and he became exponentially better and had a ton of success. You've probably heard some of his songs like Starving and The Middle, which wouldn't have been possible if he kept trying to do everything on his own. We weren't meant to do life alone. And that being said, there's a lot of time as a producer that you spend alone refining different elements, mixing, etc. And that kind of stuff is okay, but if you really want to improve a lot faster, you need to be connected with other producers. You've probably heard the quote that you're the average of the top five people you spend time with. And while that might not be literally true, you have to consider the fact that you do take on a huge amount of influence from the people that you spend the most time with. Mr. Beast has a super helpful piece of advice, which is to have a group of other like-minded people you can connect with so you can all learn from each other. Why make mistake after mistake when you can actually learn the lessons from other people who've already made the mistakes, which is why you're watching this video, which is great. So let's say there are four of you and you each learn something super important over the course of the next year. Now, instead of taking one year to learn one of those lessons, you can learn all four lessons in that one year. The growth is exponential. If you're watching this and you don't know where to start for finding a community of producers, you can start in the comment section of my videos. Honestly, you can ask questions down there and people are regularly dropping super helpful tips and pieces of advice. And I'm seriously so thankful for the community that's forming. Also, I work my butt off trying to constantly improve my videos and give you helpful information that you can actually apply. So if you wanna keep learning and improving, I would love for you to consider subscribing. It would mean a lot to me, for real. Also, just give that like button a little spanking so YouTube will send it out to help more people. Okay, on to mistake number five, which is a big one and that's producing to make money instead of music. If you wanna make a lot of money, I would not recommend the music industry. Music is first and foremost art, and art is subjective. Basically, people decide what it's worth based on how it makes them feel. If a song makes someone feel good or understood or some type of way, they'll keep listening to it and it'll make more money. But the listener decides that, not the producer. On the other side of the spectrum, an ounce of gold, for example, has a very specific value determined by its weight and market prices and all that kind of stuff. It's relatively predictable, but art, well, Number six, Violet Green and Red by Mark Rothko sold for $213 million. Art is wildly subjective, so it's hard to depend on financially because it's hard to predict what's gonna happen. You could become wildly successful in a few months due to something taking off on TikTok, or you could spend years and years putting music out every month and still make almost nothing from it. The point is, it's a huge mistake to get into producing music just for the money. Get into music for the music. Get into it for the love of creating and expressing what's inside you. If you make good music that people resonate with, you might actually make some money from it and be able to make a living from music. In fact, I have a number of friends, including myself, who've done this, but we didn't start producing to make money. We fell in love with producing music because we loved creating art. If you get into it for the money, then you're not gonna make very good music and you're not gonna make very good money. You're better off pursuing music business or even entrepreneurship and having music be something you do for fun to scratch that creative itch. Having some sort of job with music as a side gig allows you to actually take the pressure off of the music being a source of income and it stays fun for you and it stays special. And that's the sweet spot for a lot of people. Okay, we're almost done. Moving right along here, mistake number six is letting your ego prevent you from growing. Another way of saying this is being able to take the hits or being able to take the criticism and not taking it personally. So hear me out a minute. You can learn a lot from anyone if you're able to shove your ego to the side. There are two big ways your ego gets in the way of your growth when it comes to production. And these are really important. So please try to hear me out. Number one is that you could miss learning potentially life-changing information from someone because you've written them off in your head. You think, I'm a better producer than this person. What could they possibly teach me? And the next thing you know, you miss the key piece of advice that you were looking for because your ego took the wheel. 
Now, the second way your ego gets in the way is that you aren't able to receive any criticism. To be honest, even now, I still struggle with this sometimes. It's hard to hear critiques on a piece of work that you've poured your heart and your soul into, but a lot of times, those critiques can actually help you grow, and shutting them down will prevent you from becoming the best that you could be. I've had to learn to listen to everything people say and to really consider it and actually give their critique a chance to help me grow. Sometimes it just straight up isn't actually helpful and I can forget the critique, but I have to spend a little time with it first to determine that, instead of just immediately throwing out anything negative that people say about my music. It's also helpful to have a few people who you really trust that you can let in to give you honest reviews of what you're working on. But nobody is more honest than the general public who don't know you at all and who have nothing to lose by telling you how they really feel. So make sure to keep that ego in check and don't let it prevent you from an opportunity to grow in a major way. Because I did this for years and it really screwed me up and slowed down my growth. All right, finally we made it to the last mistake, number seven, which is that you learn too much without actually applying any of it. Trust me, I know how it goes. Producers spend all day on YouTube looking for that little tip or technique that's gonna take their production to the next level. And it's great to keep learning stuff, but if you spend all day learning how to shoot the perfect free throw without actually taking any shots, you're never gonna score any points. There was a college photography class, and at the end of the semester, half the class was graded on one single picture. And the other half of the class was graded based on whether or not they took 100 pictures. All they had to do was just take 100 pictures, and they got a good grade. And the other half's entire grade was based on one single picture. Then they sorted through all the pictures from everyone in the class to find the best photos that were taken from that semester. Well, as it turns out, all the best photos were selected from the group that had to take 100 pictures. And that means getting your reps in will make you a better producer than learning countless new techniques that you're rarely, if ever, gonna use. I've definitely gotten stuck in this trap too. And the way out is if you actually wanna improve, like for real, you need to set some time aside to practice and perfect what you already know. Now, some of you are just starting out and you don't know where to begin. You might not even know music theory or how to write a song or produce it out. And I actually have a paid course to teach you all that stuff so I can take people from beginner and intermediate producers all the way to advanced and professional and mentor them along the way. So if that's something you're interested in, I'll throw a link in the description with part of the course for free so you you can see what it's actually like and if it's something that you're into. But the point is, make sure that you aren't just learning, learning, learning all day and you're actually doing something with the information that you're taking in. You gotta take some action if you want to improve. So those are the seven biggest mistakes I see producers making. And if you're making some of these, there's no shame at all. And I hope that I at least caused you to reconsider things a bit and that I gave you some hope and a good direction to move in. Thanks so much for watching and spending some time with me today. And remember to stop making excuses and start making music. Cheers.